Hi there! This is the beginning of the Manipulator Robot lesson from Robocamp. In this video, we will talk about the real manipulators that are out there in the world. Uh, what are they used for, when they came to be, whether they all look like a human hand or more like a printer. Now, if you want to complete this stage of the lesson with me, all you need to do is just sit back and relax and listen to what I have to say. If you are a teacher, remember that all those instructions you see behind me could be very easily available to you and your students too. More about that in the description to this video. Click on those links and find out more about it. Also remember that every step of those instructions is actually accompanied by this text description. It's very helpful, but for the purpose of this video, it will be hidden. Now, if you are ready, let's begin. Manipulators or robotic arms were invented to replace people at work. Now, not all people, but especially those who performed highly hazardous or highly repetitive tasks. You see, thanks to their clever design, manipulators are stronger, faster, more precise, and more efficient than humans. Now, the very first robotic arms were introduced or rather started working in 1961 on the General Motors car production line. Now, since then, manipulators have been steadily improved and developed, so much so that right now they are basically indispensable in the industry. Robotic manipulators can differ a lot from one another. They can look like something very familiar, like our hand, or something more machine-like, like a printer. Now, this, their design depends on the objective, on the task that they are supposed to perform. And the differences boil down to three things. First, the number of moving parts in the robot. Second, how those parts are connected together. Finally, we also need to take a look at the propulsion of a robot. Now, some uh, the movement of some manipulators can be controlled electrically or pneumatically, that is with compressed air. Also, some manipulators are controlled hydraulically, that is, by using liquid under pressure. Here you can see a robot that can be found in automated factories around the world. It's called the Cartesian Coordinate Robot, and its name already explains a lot. Now, this robot operates in three dimensions, or rather, along three axes. X, Y, and Z. Now, thanks to this solution, this robot has a cube-shaped working field. It has three motors and its joints look like here, like rails along which this robot head slides. Now, a manipulator like this one has several advantages. It's very stable and it's very simple to program. Now, the position is given in Cartesian coordinates, so basically you just need to specify the position on each axis and you're done. <laughs> now, because of these features, these manipulators are often used to transport components in factories, but you can also see them in some of the most popular 3D printers. Articulated manipulators are also very popular in the industry. Now, they are sometimes called anthropomorphic manipulators, and that's because their shape, their design, kind of resembles a human hand. 
Now, unlike with the Cartesian robot, here each joint performs a rotary motion. Now, the combination of three joints gives you a very large working field. However, programming and route planning for this kind of robot is much more challenging. And that's because if one joint moves, it affects the location of all the others. <laughs> Articulated manipulators like this one can perform movements in space very smoothly, which is why they are used for painting surfaces, polishing, or welding complex elements. The two types of manipulators we've covered so far are not the only ones. Here you have five main types of manipulators that exist today. Number one, you probably recognize this is the Cartesian robot. Number two is slightly different. You can see it has a rotating base and two arms. So its working field is kind of like a cylinder. That's its name, cylindrical manipulator. Number three is a spherical manipulator. Now it has two rotary joints and one linear. So in this case, the working field has a sphere-like shape. Now number four, I bet also looks familiar because this is the articulated robot. Number five, however, is something slightly different. Now specialists call it SCARA robot or SCARA. Now, it consists of one linear and three rotary joints, and its special power is that it can move items from one place to another really fast. All of these robots that we've talked about so far are a group that we call serial manipulators. <laughs> now, this means that their construction forms a chain, a kinematic chain. You see, the first joint is connected to the base. Then the next joint is connected to the first one and so on and so forth until we reach the end of the robot, which is called the end effector. But there is yet another group of manipulators. They are called parallel robots. Now, in this design, each arm is attached to the base and their ends meet at the end of factor. So, when individual arms move or extend, they make the end effector move in space. Now, parallel manipulators with three arms are called tripods, but they can have more arms than three. Those with as many as six arms are called hexapods. As you can see, manipulators are very useful and very impressive. Now, today we've talked about them mostly in the context of the industry. However, it's important to remember that manipulators, and especially their precision, is greatly appreciated also in medicine, in space science, even in art. You see, robots today are a great inspiration to musicians, artists. However, robots can also become artists themselves. <laughs> That's thanks to the increasing autonomy and the development of artificial intelligence. The first works, the first pieces have already been created and sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thank you for learning more about manipulators with me. I hope you enjoyed this part of the lesson and that you learned something new. Now join me in the next part where I'll show you how to create your own robotic manipulator step by step from Lego Spike Bricks. If you like this video, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up this lets us know that you enjoy this content and you would like to see more of it. And I will see you in the next video.